What's up everybody, my name is Elliot, but you can call me the Motory Notary. And today I'm gonna to show you how I'm going to fix my Maserati using this old Ford. This is a 1929 Ford Model A, and they made over 5 million of these cars between 1928 and 1932, which made it one of the best-selling cars of all time. But that's not the only thing it had going for it. Other than its pure, simplistic beauty, it was also extremely affordable, and everyone who could afford it could afford to fix it. This is, of course, in stark contrast to my Maserati, which was never affordable. They didn't make that many of them, and if you wanted to have it fixed, you usually had to take it to a dealership where you were faced with an unreasonably expensive service bill. Back in the Depression, they, people were fixing these Ford Model A's with whatever they had lying around. Now, I can't even order simple parts for my Maserati. And that's why I'm going to take some inspiration from this really old Ford and apply it to fix my Maserati and get it back on the road. When you last saw the Kartrek Maserati, I had just gotten it out of the trailer, limped it into the main warehouse here, and up onto the lift you see behind me. Still very unsure as to what had broken. Upon further inspection, it looks like the zip tie repair that I had done in the previous video held up just fine. And in fact, something else down the line in the linkage chain of events had failed. It was a little pin or something that was missing entirely, causing the car to be stuck in third gear. Like I said in the intro, there is a part that is widely used on Ford Model A's that we were able to custom fabricate here in-house that's gonna be able to fix this part no problem. Let me show you how this thing works. Behold, my demonstration table. Come on over here and take a closer look and we'll see how 100-year-old Ford technology is gonna help fix this pasta rocket. All right, let's take a closer look at how my custom fabricated Ford Model A exclusively built for Maserati part works. The first thing here, is this clevis pin. And the Ford Model A is absolutely littered with these things, especially when it comes to the mechanical braking system. Almost everything underneath that car is held on with a clevis pin of some sort. Next, we have a custom lathed brass fitting with a nylon insert for a nice tight fit that's also smooth and allows it to rotate a little bit. Next, get your basic washer. And finally, that whole thing is held together with a cotter pin. And again, these are absolutely everywhere on Ford Model A's. Almost everything on the braking system is held in with this kind of exact setup, although the dimensions are a little different. So who would have ever thought that a 100-year-old Ford part would help fix an unobtainable Italian Maserati part? I sure wouldn't have, but I know I'm the only one who's got one of these. So let's put it in and see how it fits. Here's the deal guys, sometimes you have audio issues and this is one of those times, but that's what voiceover is for. As you can see here, like any real YouTuber, I'm going to have somebody else perform the work and I will film my uncle struggling to get this clevis pin in. Here I'm probably making a joke about how whoever invented the Cotter pin was probably very rich and almost certainly had a name like William B. Cotter or something like that. There's the pin, it's in, it's looking good, but the cotter pin is not in yet. And right here is when we discover that the cotter pin might not actually work for this application. And in fact, we need to pull an audible and do a clevis keeper, which is this more complex kind of knot thing, but it is way easier to install because you just kind of push it in rather than push it in and bend it like a cotter pin. Here you have almost surgical like footage of my uncle actually doing it. And there it is, it's clipped in. And now we can see him actually work the mechanism back and forth. And as you can see from down here, it looks like it's gonna be great, but that's why I'm gonna get the ladder, hop up in the car and actually actuate the shifter. Huh, actually actuate, here we go. All right, I'm in the car now. We're gonna try shifting through the gears and see what it looks like from the bottom, just like we did last time, but obviously things are different now. So here we go. There's first, There's first. second, Third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and then here comes reverse, neutral wiggle. Well, as you guys just saw, everything looks great. The only thing left to do now is to take it out for a test drive. So let's lower it down, and hit the road. All right, now I have not yet shifted gears. I've just been in first, so 
we'll see if it works the same way on the road as it does on the lift. Feels pretty good. Here's third. It feels better than it ever has. So maybe this pin was about to go out this whole time. The whole time. There's enough going on. Various twists and links and two cables. It feels borderline suspiciously smooth. Like it's like, it's weird. I'm so used to jamming this car into gear. Oh, the sound. The I know. I know. No, also though, while we're just here, reverse was always a thing. Okay. Not anymore. Wow. Look at that. Because even Tavares, he says you have to put it in reverse with some authority. And uh, now, it's almost like a BMW shifter. Not quite. I don't think we, let's not compliment it too much. But then sixth. But it is in gear, so. And I don't feel like it popped back out. Remember, it was kind of going dunk, dunk. Well, you're never going to get the positive shift that you do with a direct right. shifter. It's got cables. There's a lot between here and where it's actually shifting. Ugh, that's a pretty bad rub. I don't think the track helped any with that issue. <laughs> So you see, you really can keep a modernish exotic on the road using principles from old Fords like this. And while I might not be able to do much to fix this car's electronics, I can use the principles of a Ford Model A to keep this Maserati on the road. Back in the day, if you had a Model A, you would use whatever you had lying around to keep the thing on the road. And I say we can adopt that same principle to keep our dying exotics on the road. That's gonna do it for this episode though, guys. Be sure to follow me on Instagram. I usually post tons of stuff that I can't always show on YouTube there. Like me on Facebook, join my Facebook group. It's a great place to share memes and I'm almost always in there interacting in the comments. And other than that, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe on this video. It greatly helps my performance on YouTube and I will see you guys on the next video. All right, let's take a closer look of how my custom made, one of a kind Elliott Alvis exclusive Ford Model A custom fabricated Maserati fix works. <laughs> That's a mouthful. Okay, well, I feel pretty good about this. Yeah. So, not good enough to turn in front of this car, but pretty good.